somebody don't want to preach that because they're scared they're going to lose members. But I mean, I want the members that want that so that we can fix that and change that. Amen. Because they're going to act the way they look. The boys are looking effeminate. They're going to act effeminate. Amen. The girls looking butch. They're going to be butch. Amen. Yeah, it's got to be preached. It just has to be preached. So we just thank God for a place to preach it. Amen. 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 Thank God for our church. Look at somebody and say, thank God for this church. Amen. All right. Well, we're going to get into this message. Adamantbeliever.com forward slash. Look at somebody and say, stop talking about that. Stop talking about that. That, amen, we have to be careful what we say. Because our words, contrary to what Donnie McClurkin said, words have power. Amen, like Cam said last week, quit saying sticks and stones uh, uh, may hurt my bones, but your words will never hurt me or whatever. That ain't true. Words hurt. Words have more power than sticks and stones. Words can get bombs dropped. So words matter. So you have to be very careful what you are saying, how you are saying it, who you're saying it to. Amen. Be very, look at somebody say, be careful. You know, some people, that's the problem. They don't want to be that careful. They don't want to believe that their words have power so they can have the freedom to say whatever they're thinking. But you can't do that because your words, there's somebody right now probably somewhere messed up because you went off on them. You forgot about it because that's just the way you do things. But they're somewhere having a hard time getting over it because they held you in high regard and your words have power. Word curses are real. You can speak a curse. The Bible said with the tongue you can speak blessings and cursings. I heard a clap in the back. Somebody believe that. Yes, you can. Call your child ugly all their life when they grow up, no matter how beautiful they are. They can't even see it because of a word curse that was spoken over them. Amen. Call them stupid all their life. And they can be smart, have a good future, but they can't see it because of the word curse, what you spoke. That's why you have to be careful. When you get mad, just don't say nothing. Do you know how to leave the room? Go get in your car and drive around and come back? Because the stuff you unleash, you can't retract. I believe this is one of the most important scientific discoveries of all time. I am really shocked that we don't even learn this in school. This is some this is some next level stuff and it was verified to be true. Dr. Masari Moto and what he discovered was, you know, when you speak to the water and you say certain things like I love you or, you know, you're my friend or beautiful. Yeah, even, beautiful, yeah. angel. Mm -hmm. It could be simple, just like angel, happiness, peace. Mm -hmm. When you say these positive words to the water and then you freeze it, it makes beautiful shapes. Most of the time, they're symmetrical. They look yeah. like, like you beautiful. You Google images. They have photos of this. They look like snowflakes, like beautiful, symmetrical snowflakes. Now, when you say mean, nasty words to the water, and then they freeze the water, it would make ugly, repulsive shapes. Asymmetrical. Yeah, like cracks and looks like damage. Bubbles. And he basically proved that like your consciousness and your will combined with the intention behind your words affects reality. It's like the concept that like your words are magic, so much so that you change physical reality. Yeah, it is quite literally proof that the things that come out of your mouth change reality. affect your physical surroundings. Amen. So you got to be careful what you are saying. And don't keep repeating history. When you repeat history, you keep history alive. So when you keep repeating what happened to you, what happened to you never dies. And 
What happened to you keeps happening to you because you keep giving it life. I'm going to go a whole lot of ways on this first slide, but that's okay. Amen. And you know, uh, uh, be careful what you are saying in your anger, in your emotions, in your feelings. Guard your, look at somebody say, guard your mouth. Guard your mouth. Amen. I had people when I was young, you know, a couple of people that wanted me at the church I was going to to marry their daughter. Because, you know, I just went way somewhere and got Sabatha and just brought her to church. Shocked. It was the, the visit that was heard around the world. They didn't know what had happened. I just showed up at church. I'm the musician or the youth or whatever I was doing at the church. And so everybody had their cousin, daughter, something in line thinking that I was, you know, that, 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 that I would be a good catch for them. So I just showed up. I said, let me just, 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 just go on and just drop this bomb. So I showed up with a woman and boy, all the prophecies started. Oh, that's not going to last. God showed me, mm, showed me that that's not going to last. Now, these are folks telling me, oh, I had a dream. And God showed me that girl that you came with. And, and, that, and that's a curse thing. And this, oh, this vid, God gave me a vision. I saw her and I saw this and that. And speaking all of this stuff over me. So I'm toiling and wrestling with what I should do. Because some of these people I thought was really saved. So are they really hearing from the Lord? Or what? And you know who told me not to listen to them? My daddy. My daddy said, and it wasn't nothing spiritual about it. It wasn't nothing spiritual about it. He said, that's the one you like? Forget them. <laughs> And I'm like, but daddy, they seeing dreams and visions and, and eagles flying and all kinds of angel dust. And he said, so? If you like her, you just like her. But you got to be careful. Now all them folks that spoke that, mental illness. Sick. Cripple. Stuff just wrong with them. Because they taking God's words and speaking them and putting them on people. And even if you turn them off, they are still planting seeds. So you can't do that. That's how serious this is. Look at somebody and say, stop talking about that. Oh, somebody wasn't ready for this message this morning, but <clears throat> I gotta say what God tells me to say. All right. Slide two. Finally, the death and life are in the power of the tongue. This means that we have the ability to give something life or death by talking about it over and over again. You have the ability to give it death by saying it, canceling it, renouncing it, killing it, and then shutting up about it. But you have power with the same tongue to give it life if you keep talking about it. That's death and life in the power of the tongue. You know, the hand claps today aren't really gonna matter much. <laughs> cause some of this stuff is all good cause somebody done came to you with a word. And God is saying today, cancel that. If it wasn't him. And if it was out of order, it wasn't him. Cause God don't work out of order. This means that we have the ability to give something life or death. That's in the power of your tongue. Right. Death and life, Proverbs 18 and 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. That means the stuff that goes out of your mouth, you got to eat it yeah. when it comes back.
Can I keep preaching this, Jay Brian? You all right with this? Okay, okay. Amen. It's getting, you know, I'm, you know. Eating the fruits of what you say can be tasty or bitter. Depends on what you said. It can be tasty if you gave a positive word or just an encouragement or an admonishment to somebody, encouraging them, helping them to keep going. Man, I'm praying for you. All of this and this. But if you done gave them a word where you done dug into their business, and their business wasn't your business. Now, you done got into some stuff that's going to come back better. James 3 and 6 says, and the tongue is a fire, a world of sin, iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it does what? It defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature. And it is set on fire of hell. That means somebody can be on course following God's plan and then you come along and say something that completely gets them off course and they end up going to hell. You know, I'm very careful. Oh, I could live in the prophetic. I could. I could live there. But I don't. I don't have to. I don't have to. I tell you, if, if the Lord leads me to tell you something, I can tell you. I'll come tell you. But most of the time, I depend on what's being preached there. Because that's what I live by, too. And that's safer too. Amen. I don't need to get up here and call out credit card numbers and stuff. Make y'all think I hear from God. <laughs> Amen. I don't have to get weird with it. Now prophecy, all of those things are real. Don't get me wrong, but they all operate in God's order. And so I don't, I don't, man, you know, I don't have to flex that when I can just show you in the word. And teach sound doctrine. Hey, man, I'm going to encourage myself. I'm, wherever the claps is the loudest, I'm walking that way. James 3 and 6 talks about that tongue and says it will set things on, the, on fire and the fire of hell. Meaning you can have that effect by speaking. So if you keep talking about your past, you're going to be a slave of your past. If you keep talking about what they did to you, what happened to you, what you're going to be, a, it's going to control you. You'll never get past it if you keep talking about it. Well, it's my testimony. Well, tell your testimony and then hush. Move on. You have the power to stop it from affecting you when you stop talking about it. I'm going to say that again because it's thick in here. You have the power to stop it from affecting you when you stop talking about it. Amen. I tell folks, be careful when you're writing a book about everything that happened to you. And changing the names like folk don't know who you talking about. <laughs> His name was Calvin and in the book he's Dalvin. <laughs> everybody know you only know five people anyway. But be careful when you put yourself out there like that because a lot of times you give life to old stuff. It won't go away 
until it goes away from your speech. Thank you. I heard a clap. Yeah, once it goes away from your speech, it'll go away. Amen. So quit bringing up the past. In your relationship, quit bringing the past up. Don't get mad and bring the past up every time you get mad. Why are you holding on to the past? Every time you talk about it, you reopen it. You give it life again. God done pulled you almost all the way away from it. You 90% there and then you talk about it again. Some stuff ought to just be off limits. Amen. Amen. Once we dealt with it, talked about it, we ain't bringing that up no more. Because we're not going to give it life. Amen. This is called duct tape. Just go buy some. You can get it at Walgreens, CVS, everywhere. Chris probably got some in his vehicle. That's just duct tape, air conditioned ducts. That's what it was originally made for. But of course, we as African Americans, we have developed other uses for it. You know, we, we use duct tape like paper tape. We taping documents together with it. I mean, we don't care. It's leaving that residue of everything. Oh, you can't get it off. <laughs> we was at this church one time I was speaking and you know, I had my cables from my laptop and stuff and they, you know, they like to either put a rug over it or they'll tape it up so when people are walking they won't trip and this dude came out with a big old roll of duct tape. And I said, man, you, what you gonna do? He said, no, nah, nah, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tape it all up I'm gonna, so you don't, I said, you can't use duct tape. That's going to leave residue on the carpet. But you know what else it's going to do? It's going to mess my stuff up. My stuff going to be sticky. I said, brother, there's another kind of tape for that. Now, it costs a little more. But there's another kind. But, yeah, we got, we use duct tape for anything. I saw a box at UPS trying to ship, and they done taped it up with duct tape. You ever seen that other day? Are you taping cardboard with duct tape? <laughs> but just like the residue from that tape, your issue is not going to go away <laughs> if you keep talking about it. See how I did that? Hey, man, I know what I'm doing. But if you keep talking about it, it'll keep living. It'll live. Ephesians 4 and 22, that ye put off concerning the what? Former conversation, the what? Old man, which is what? Corrupt according to. So we have to put off the former conversation. What happened to the old man is not happening now to the new man. So we're not talking about what happened to the old man anymore. We're putting off that conversation. You give room for reconciliation and healing when you stop talking about the past. Amen. Amen. Don't leave the church because you heard something that hurt your feelings. Because you know what you're going to do? You're going to leave the church, go to another church, and keep talking about what happened at the old church. You know why you're going to keep talking about it? Because you really want to be there. But you made the wrong decision out of emotions. I know I'm preaching. Yeah. Yeah. Like Cam said last week, man, just hear it, hurt, and then move on. Amen. Amen. This generation, man, they just can't take stuff. Boy, our pastors would call us. Come here, brother. Come here. Come here. Y'all, I heard brother was, you know. Come up here. Come up here. Bring your wife. Bring your wife. (laughs) Bring bring your wife. Sit, sit, bring y'all up and just go in on you. He be crying. Then when he see he done just, just destroyed you. Come on, y'all now pray for we love them now. All of us have stuff. All of us error. Uh, well, why, why did you lead with that? Why didn't everybody come up here if all of us? Why you waited till the axe chopped my head 
off and my head was rolling down the aisle and then you turned on the compassion when you saw that I might not be able to walk out of here. Remember that? That's the way we grew up. I got whoopings during service. And my daddy was the, was the pastor. Hold on, y'all. In the middle of the message. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Craig, come here, boy. I'm not playing. Your daddy did that. I'm not playing. That stuff is traumatizing. You know, when you're the pastor's son, you try to have a little swag and stuff. And, you know, it just... It's gone that day. That's it. All your sweat. If you got a whooping during a message, God whooped you. But that's what they did. They didn't, they didn't care about feelings because they, I mean, they were just like Old Testament folks. You know? But things are a little nicer now, so we don't do that. But you got to be able to take correction too. Take correction. I put that on Instagram this morning by how we were so used to being able to comment that we can't receive instruction right. When we receive instruction, we automatically think comment. When we should be learning in silence. We shouldn't be thinking of a comeback, a clap back. We should be able to receive instruction and admonishment and reproof in silence can you do that yes sir i received that yeah I, I, I was out of order yes sir i gotta change that i gotta fix that amen but when you keep bringing it up you done got hurt and that's all you talk about you inviting folks to your house just so you can talk about what somebody in the church did to you did you know that song well you know i'm not gonna say nothing Yes, you are. You are going to say something. Yeah, and you just totally mess up reconciliation and healing. But you give room for it when you stop talking about the past. When you're able to let the past go, you open the door for reconciliation and healing. To have a good relationship come out of it. Amen. Amen. I got into it with a lot of folks in this church when they first got here. They didn't know me well, and they thought that, you know, whatever the case. But over time, I've developed a good relationship with them because we left room for reconcili reconciliation and healing. They didn't go try to group up with the people that feel like they feel about the pastor. Amen. Some people do that, and your life is miserable because of it. And still come to church. I, I'm not going where I feel like that. It's Sunday. You know how many fishing ponds is out there? How many? I mean, Lake Louisville, what's jumping now? Crappie? I'm going to catch something on Sunday morning in the lake. I ain't going to be at church frustrated. Guess I'll go back. No, let, let, us put you, let us put you out your misery. Give you an invitation to go fishing. You know, the old folks, you say, you go fishing on Sunday, you'll catch the devil. Well, they already caught the devil. <laughs> they used to say all kind of stuff. They said, when it, if it rains when the sun is out, the devil is whipping his wife. But I'm like, when is the devil not whipping his wife? Ain't he the devil? Does it require that the sun and the rain? That's the devil. I think he always whipping him. And who married him? Who married the devil? Somebody in here. I, help. Help. That's me. Me. <laughs> uh, he ain't as bad as the devil. I'm sorry. Yeah, they had all kind of sayings. <laughs> but you give room for reconciliation and healing when you stop talking about the past. Philippians 3 and 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do. So I ain't made it. Amen. Your pastor, that's me I'm talking to. I ain't made it. I don't count myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, 
forgetting those things which are behind. Forgetting those things. Look at somebody and say, forgetting those things that are behind. And reaching forth unto those things which are before. You know what that means? Stop talking about that. Stop talking about that. That's behind you. And if it's not behind you, put it behind you. You can't put it behind you if you don't cease to talk about it. You give people an opportunity to make things right or improve when you speak good of them instead of dwelling on what they may have done to you or what occurred between you in the past. Yeah. So you give them an opportunity. You give opportunity for things to be made right when you stop talking about what happened that was wrong. Yeah, y'all went at it. Y'all had words, but they're words. Now get past them. Close the door on that. Stop talking about it. The devil going to keep sending people to you to make you talk about it. Yeah. yeah. That's the devil. He's going to keep sending people to you to make you keep bringing it up. So you have to make the decision. I'm going to stop talking about this. I'm closing this door myself. And I'm not opening it again. I'm past that. Then when somebody comes, when the devil sends somebody to talk about it, you're like, nah, look, man, I don't talk about that anymore. That's been settled. That's been handled. I don't talk about it anymore. Oh, boy. This is the, 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 uh, Hey, I, I hope y'all hear me. I'm trying to lighten your load. Amen. Everybody don't need to know what happened. Amen. And then somebody might be friends with somebody that you were against. And if you start talking about them, now they got doubt in their mind. Y'all got it. Man, stop planting these seeds. Hey, because you going to be held accountable. Titus 3 and 2 says, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. Brawlers. You can't be no brawler and a Christian. Amen. You can't take folks to fisticus and be scrapping and all that. I'm just, that's just my nature. I'm just scrapping. I come from the streets. You're supposed to be saved. The streets supposed to be out of you by now. You've been saved 10 years and you still look like you came from the streets? It's 20 years later and you still crip walking and wearing the plaid flannel shirt button to the top button. Black on black forces. You, you got the scrapola outfit on. Like that's the outfit when it's just time to get down. <laughs> Ten years later. You're supposed, to, you're, you're supposed to be saved now. Things are supposed to change. Amen. Amen. You're not dressed to fight all the time anymore. That's the way you grew up. You had to look like that. That was your hood. <laughs> mm -hmm. But anyway, you can't be looking like, you can't be no scrapper, no brawler, always looking to get into it. Just walk, people you don't even know. How you doing? What? Like what, what man, what? Say man, I just want to tell you your shoes untied. Your forces are untied. You might want to tie that force up. Good gracious. Nah, man. God needs to change that about you. Amen. But that's you carrying your past to protect you. 
It's, you know, you was in the hood, you needed that. Now you're in the church, you still think you need that protection. That means you are still a slave to your past. The Bible says be gentle. Gentle. You know what? Gentle is approachable. Yeah. It's approachable. It means you can be approached. Yeah. As believers, we should all be approachable. How are you going to witness and you're not approachable? Amen. Showing all meekness unto all men, meaning you in control of the power that you possess. The devil wants you to keep eating the fruits of the past through your conversation. When you talking that stuff that's bad fruit, you got to eat it. <clears throat> and when you continue to eat old rotten fruits of the past, you cause bitterness to fester inside of you. You eat this apple, it's going to taste bitter. And you swallow it, bitterness is going inside of you. Look at that apple. Yeah, because the apple is rotten. Fruit don't last like that. So you, you going back and getting old rotten fruit and you keep speaking that, you got to eat that. Amen. So you can't keep talking about it. You got to stop talking about that. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 4 and 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be what? Be what? With all malice. Put it away from you. Don't eat the fruit of the past. Past. Words have, look at somebody say words have power. I don't know why any preacher would come on the internet and say that words don't have power when we function completely by words. We function by prayer. We function by declarations. We speak things. We say things. We command things. We denounce things. We renounce things. We do it all with words. Don't work well when it stays in our head. We got to speak it out. God created the world with words. He spoke it and it occurred. We have a similar power on earth. Sim Look, somebody say it's similar, but not the same. Amen. You can't go create a world. I don't care how, don't care how loud you say, let there be light. If you don't pay the bill, there won't be light. You can go down to TXU. <laughs> Speak to the generators. Let there be light. I speak it. So we have a similar power. Almost like that. Not quite. We have a similar power on earth to speak God's will into existence. Now we do have the power to speak his will into existence. Amen. Yeah, that's different from the light bill. Now, his will is that you have electricity, I'm pretty sure. But you got to go to him and he show you how to get that electricity by doing what he said way back in Genesis 3. Work. 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 Look at somebody and say work. You know, if you work a job, you'll have the money and then you can pay that bill and you can speak to that electricity. Right before they turn it on, you go out there, it's going to work. When you see the truck driving up, let there be lights. <laughs> Boom. See that? <laughs> but verily, uh, well, we have similar power on earth to speak God's will. Mark 11 and 23 says, for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain. Now, does this sound like words have power? This is Jesus saying this. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And what? Shall not doubt in his heart, 
but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall what? Have whatsoever he thinks. He thinks. If he has whatsoever he says, that means what he said had power. Look at somebody and say, words have power. Amen. This is not the name it, claim it foolishness centered around greed and worldly desires. Amen. 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 It's not yours just for the asking. Amen. It's not. No, I mean, that's a nice song. Name it. That's a nice song. Claim it. It's yours. Folks back then was walking around Cadillacs. Sitting in it, I claim this. I name and claim this. Yeah, I went through that. That was the 80s. That was the 80s. He's walking around houses and buildings and churches and walking around it seven times. I never understood the correlation of the seven times, you know, because in Joshua, that was a wall you wanted to crash down. Like, I'm not walking around the house I want seven times. It's going to crash down. <laughs> Trying to knock the fence down like, so you can get in it? Like, what? <laughs> but people, people, man, they just, you know, they want to be able to just say it. But if it's according to God's will, then yes, we have the ability to speak it. Amen. If it's according to his will. But speaking, uh, so I'm not talking about naming and claiming foolishness, but speaking spiritual fruit can do what? Bring good to us. What are the spiritual fruit? The love, joy, the peace, the long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. And I like the King James Version fruits. I like the way they, that, that version says it. Some of the other versions, the words are just a little, you know. I like temperance over self-control. Temperance. Amen. <laughs> just, that's just me. I'm a King James. Any other version I'm reading, I read along with or in accordance with the King James because I know how the translation happens. I could preach a whole sermon on it. I know the, what they changed, why they changed it. I know the councils that came together to make the Bibles and some of it and, you know, adding it and doing these kinds of things. Jesuits got to it and did what they did. I know all of that. I got a whole video about it. But that's why I do like the breakdown of some of the scripture in some of them to amplify different things. But I always use it in accordance with the King James Version because that is the, the, the best translation. Amen. And I don't care who King James was. He didn't touch it. It happened under his administration. That's why it's called the King James Version. So don't you let one of these long-haired Negroes downtown tell you that something is wrong with King James and he was gay and so that messed the Bible. He had nothing to do with it. It happened under his administration. It happened in the name of King James. That's why his name is on it. Amen. But I know, you know, some of it gets a little new agey. So I, I do read the King James. I make sure the, the, the spiritual fruit I remember are the King James versions. Amen. And that's just me and my preference. And you like patience and lovingness or whatever they say it is. I like love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. That's the way I like it. Amen. That's, amen. That's me. But the name it, claim it doctrine and all of that, I, you know, I don't believe that, but we are able to speak the spiritual fruit of God into existence. So when a situation is, when you're upset, you can speak the spiritual fruit of love in a situation and God can turn that whole thing around and work in accordance to what you spoke Isaiah 55 and 11 says so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall what not return unto me void but it shall what accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whether to I send it. So if my word is going to go out and not return void and prosper in the thing from where I send it, 
then that words, those words have power. They have power to prosper. And power to not return void. Amen. The fruit that we are eating from and speaking of should always be the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. So you won't talk about the past if you're long suffering. Yeah. Yeah. You won't talk about how somebody hated you and did you this way or that way if you're wrapped in love. I'm, I, I can't. Somebody like, well, Pastor, you don't understand how hard this stuff is that you're saying. Well, it's only hard because you have rehearsed your past so much. It has gained ground in you. It has laid a foundation in you. It belong, It feels it belongs inside of you. It's a part of your makeup. It's who you are. Other people know that if they talk to you long enough, you're going to bring up what happened to you. He's the jivest hand claps ever. Yeah, this is one of those messages. Amen. So you got to be careful. You got to, you, you got to, you got to operate love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness. Man, if you be good, just be good. Show goodness to somebody that's operating in a bad spirit with you. Show goodness. Well, Pastor, I just grew up on the rough side. I ain't no punk. I just can't sit there and let folks just, what? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can sit there and let folks do that. Yes, you can. Jesus did. Jesus did it every day. Can you imagine Jesus, the power that Jesus had? He could have just blew everything up any time. And in, oh, I'm sick of this dude. Pow! Yeah. But he tolerated us because he loved us. He, he put up with it. He excused it. He forgave it. He forgave it. That's love. And that's the love we got. Man, I, I think I went back. That's the love we got to operate out of consistently. The fruits of the Spirit. This is why we must lace our speech with the right things and stop talking about the things that what? Cannot be changed. Amen. My old pastor, you know, if you come up to me, I won't let you talk about it if you've ever tried it. I won't let you talk about your old pastor. Because I don't know him. And I don't care. Amen. You at another church now. It don't matter. Man, at my old church, I was just hurt and I was just. Hurt. Can you change that? Can you change what happened in the past? Then why are we talking about it? And what do you want me to do? And usually people that come to me talking about their old pastor turn the hourglass over. They're going to be the one to talk about me. Yeah, so get over it. Look at somebody say, get over it. Get over it. Stop talking about it. Don't give it any more life. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Every time you bring it up, it lives. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You know, Eddie, we're going to record some hand claps. And I'm going to hook them up to my little machine over there. And we're just going <laughs> to. Yeah, you know, certain things you preach, everybody into it. Oh, yeah, yeah, but this kind of stuff, man. Some people, their past is their identity. You've carried, along, you've carried it along with you so long, it's your friend now. It's comfort now. It's identity. And God is saying, stop talking about that. 
Stop talking about, you know how sick your husband might be of you talking about what happened to you? Or your wife hearing you talk about what happened to you? Nobody wants to keep hearing that because that makes what happened to you more important than what's happening to you. I'm in the house tonight. Ooh, I'm encouraged. I encourage myself. Oh, I pray. When I wrote this message, I prayed. And I encourage myself. I'm good. Amen. Isaiah 43 and 18. Remember ye not the former things. Neither consider the what? So don't, don't even remember how things were. And things are rough enough now to, that it should have your full attention. <laughs> Amen. I don't have brain juice for the past. I'm using all mine for what's going on right now. Love, joy, peace, long suffering. These are the things we have to speak. And these are things that help us going forward, but we got to leave the things, the former things behind us and do not consider the things of old. You don't want to eat old fruit. Have you ever eaten old fruit? An old squishy banana? They get just disgusting when they get old. Old plum and but old fruit, if you eat old fruit, you're going to get sick. It's bitter, it's nasty. And that's what happens when you keep repeating the past. That's what's happening to your spiritual walk. It's degrading because you won't let go of what happened to you. Amen? Summary! Somebody like, good, it's over! You needed this. I know I did. Words have power. Look at somebody say, words have power. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. What does our tongue do? It speaks words. We will have what we keep saying, whether it's good or bad. That's the power you have with your words. Death and life is in the power of the yard which is the Hebrew word for hand, the yard of our tongue or the hand of our tongue creates what we are speaking on a consistent basis. Not material things that we want, so you can't go speak a Bentley. <laughs> Although you have tried. Amen. <laughs> Get a matchbox Bentley. Amen. You know the maintenance on a bit. That's what folks, you know, you have to be in that echelon that financial you got to be in that area you, you can't just be gifted a car like that amen there's a cost of ownership attached to that car amen you got a two hundred thousand dollar car your oil chain gonna be about fifteen hundred dollars And they never tell you, and when you walk in there, you can't ask them, how much is this going to cost? Everybody be like, oh, what? What is he doing in here? He shouldn't be here. So you can't say nothing. You just got to just take it. You give them your keys, and then you pick it up, and they get it. Oh, yes, okay, that'll be seventeen fifty. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hmm. Seventeen fifty, huh? Okay. Here you go. <laughs> yeah man it's a cost of ownership on that stuff boy amen <laughs> the yard of our tongue creates what we are speaking on a consistent basis it's not material things that we want but definitely the spiritual things will manifest because of our continuous conversation about them Manifest, not meaning no old witchy new age manifest, but I mean it will manifest in terms of it, it, it will become a thing, a real thing, because of your continuous conversation about it. Amen. If words did not have the power, if words did not have power, then God would not have instructed us in the book of James about what our conversation should be. Why is God even telling us how we should talk if our words don't have power? 
We cannot continue to talk about the past and bring up what was done to us, what they did to us, or how bad it was to us. First of all, if none of y'all was in slavery, then it wasn't that bad. Amen. You didn't grow up on a plantation chopping cotton and toting bales and busting up chiffero, whatever that is. You wasn't doing none of that stuff. It wasn't that bad. I wish you would, boy, my daddy, them generation. I, you know, we, my daddy had that fail safe because he chopped cotton when he was young. They used to have a lot of kids just so that they could have like a whole team of, 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 of cotton, uh, cotton choppers. So I could never, this, I could never tell my daddy I was tired. I could never say, I don't want to go to work. I don't feel good. I mean, just, there were things that just never worked with him. He just, I, right, brother, son, I, I chop cotton. So, <laughs> you can't, you, yeah, you can't beat that. Like, you just, <laughs> you can't tell him, you can't give him no, no stories. No, there was no outs. You going to work. Amen. Amen. We need to bring some of that stuff back. Yeah. Folk complaining too much. What's wrong with you? Oh, my. I, I'm just real anxious. Anxious? We would have got a whooping for anxiety. You got anxiety and it's going to cost me money? I know how to get it out. Where my, I, know, I know how to get it out. Where my belt? And I fix this anxiety. Mama, I got depression. I need to go see somebody about it. No, you don't. You finna see me about it. Because I'm finna whoop it out of you. Whoop depression. Depression is finna leave. Cheer up! You better cheer up. Cheer up now. Then after they beat you, now stop that crying. Stop that crying. You ain't going to embarrass me. Stop that crying. And remember when we were out in public, we couldn't cry out. You can't cry out in public. And they would hit you with an uppercut. Boom. And you have to sit there. Then you start that... <laughs> and they stir you down like you better keep it at that decibel you better keep it at that that level because if you embarrass me in this store <laughs> y'all know I'm telling the truth man man my mama used to have you know, she didn't have fake nails when she was young. I mean, when she was, uh, when I was young. She had real nails. So if you was doing something, she'd make that face. Mm, just pull skin, ligaments, veins, everything coming out. In church. And you just. <laughs> altar call. Is there anyone? Yes. Cause you can cry out at the altar. Ah! Oh, he getting a no. Oh, oh, the Lord is working with him. God is working on. Ah! <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I don't even know what the altar call was for. I just, I just know you open the altar, and I can let this out. When we continue to speak on our past, we become fruitless and spiritually barren. Now, why are you talking about the past? Why are you talking about what happened to you? Can anyone stop the plan of God? So what was done to you, can it stop the plan of God? So what are you talking about? That's the part. That's the part right there. Why are you talking about something that can't stop you? 
something that can't stop God. Yeah, I've had people tell me they come and you know they join the church or whatever and he wouldn't let me work my ministry he stopped me he just shut me down and I was there and I, God was using me and he wouldn't acknowledge it and this and this what are you doing now so I stopped it I stopped what God wanted to do through you am I able to do that So was it God? Or was I right? I can't stop God. You can't stop God. You can't stop God. You can't stop. Can't nobody in here stop God. If God got something for you to do, nobody in here can stop it. If I'm able to stop it, it wasn't God. And why you got to do it in here? Why you got to use ABC and the EX Ministries platform to launch your ministry? That's not what I did. I just started preaching. So if can't nobody stop the plan of God, then no matter what was done, it cannot stop God's plan for you. So why focus on what cannot stop anything versus what God can do in spite of? Why aren't you focused on what God can do in spite of? You don't have to preach here to be a preacher. You don't have to pray here to be a spiritual warrior. But there's an order here that we follow. But that's just here. You can get your spiritual fishing pole and launch your lure in the deep. And go start what God told you to start. What? And they get mad at me. When I'm doing what God told me to do. Yeah, but see, you already did the work, and I could just pig it back, and I could just. <laughs> you already built it, so now I can just, you know, just rest upon the. <laughs> I know I have preached at ABC today. That's okay. That's okay. We must keep our conversation fruitful, laced with the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. James, now if words didn't have power, this scripture wouldn't be in here. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Then let him show out of a good what? Let him show his, out of a good conversation his works. Let him show out of a good conversation. Is that speaking? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Everyone stand to your feet. Amen. Look at somebody say stop talking about that. You know, some things do happen and they're traumatic and traumatizing and life altering and it was big what happened. But you still got to stop talking about it because you give it life. You make it live. Can't go forward looking in the rearview mirror. Person that's driving and, and constantly looking in the rearview mirror will crash. They can't see where they're going for where they're coming from. And that's what talking about your past always does. What happened to you, what they did to you, what they said to you, what they should have done, what you should have, all of that. It's just conversation that just has to go because it's keeping you from being able to speak spiritual fruit 
and move forward. So if that's you and you want prayer for that, I want you to just come up. We're going to believe, God, that your past won't even be a factor anymore. Don't bring it up. I, you know, and it takes, man, it takes unplugging from God sometimes. God got to just snatch that thing off of you. You know, my old church this and my old church, my old pastor this. And it was like this. It was like that. It was, you know, man, uh-uh. No, no. The former things got to go. Man, we walking in something new. Do you know that 2024 has never happened before? Like old folks say, folks is dying now that ain't never died before. <laughs> Things are happening now that's never happened before. So you need a double, triple dose. You got to let that past go. Man, your past, your past will steer you into the past. And you trying to get somewhere. I'm trying to, man, I'm trying to press forward, man. So I'm not going to let nothing, listen to this. I'm not going to let nothing passages preach. He was in my business. He was in my row. He was in my seat, in my purse, my wallet, my jacket, wherever. The, but man, I needed it. I'm just going to take it. And I'm going to let this stuff go once and for all. Amen. That's what we're going to do. That's what we going to do. So everyone bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for your power. We thank you for the power of words that you've even given us. We thank you that with the power of words, we can pray and talk to you. Our words can pierce through atmospheres and bypass other thrones of other gods and go straight to your throne room, God. Our our prayers, our words have power, Lord, that can go into other dimensions. And Father God, that can bind things above like they are here. And Father God, you've just given us so much power with our words, so we don't want to take that lightly. But many of us have. Many of us have been saying the wrong things. Many of us have been saying the wrong stuff, doing the wrong stuff. We just took it for granted that we just can say this and say that and it won't have any bearing on us or anyone else. But Father God, we have to be careful. So help us, God, to be careful what we're saying. Help us, God, to be careful who we're talking to. Most importantly, help us, God, to be careful not to bring former things into a new situation. We don't want to speak those things anymore. Father God, help us, Lord, with this. Some of these things really, really hurt us, really bothered us. We haven't really fully gotten over it, so we keep talking about it. But every time we talk about it, we feel worse and worse. It's not helping anything. So God, help us to put that away. Put it away for good. So we won't see people differently. So we won't think of people the wrong way. So we won't, Father God, isolate ourselves. But God, help us to let it go and stop talking about it. And remind us of this message, remind us of this commitment that we make right now to stop talking about it. Remind us what we said when we said what we said. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, hug somebody and say, I'm going to stop talking about that. I'm going to stop talking about that. I'm going to stop talking about that. On your way to your seat, I'm going to stop talking about that. Amen. Parents, stop talking about that now. Give them a chance. Amen. They're just a mini you. They're just doing what you used to do. Give them a chance. Let them off the hook. Let him off the hook.